So we have, at this point, seen what happens when you have a repeated eigenvalue, but what happens when you have a very special case repeated eigenvalue? In this case, the repeated eigenvalue comes from the fact that the diagonal is zeros, all zeros, nothing there, and the other diagonal is the same number in both places. So you'll notice, probably right out of the gate, that if we were to do this using the eigenvalue method, we'd find out that our characteristic polynomial looks like this, which means that we really have one repeated eigenvalue. And so we'd know how to proceed from there. We'd use the ballad. And we'd wind up with a particular solution. In this case, y of t would be e to the negative 3t times my whatever my initial condition vector is, x of 0, y of 0, plus t times e to the negative 3t times my modified coefficient matrix with my eigenvalue in there. But if you notice, if I modify this thing with the eigenvalue, we wind up with 0 here and 0 here. So 0, 0, 0, 0. The whole thing is just 0. It would be times zeros. So it's as if that second term just kind of disappears. This whole second term just goes away. And all we're left with for our general solution for the system is that. Now, we could have done it another way as well, because if you might have spotted it, this is what we would call a completely decoupled system. Which means we really have two equations that we can solve completely separately. dx dt equals negative 3x, and dy dt equals negative 3y. And those are pretty boring equations for us to solve, which we could have done way back in chapter 1, just by saying x of t is c1 e to the negative 3t, and y of t is c2 e to the negative 3t. And if you're thinking, wow, that looks kind of familiar, that's because this is exactly the same thing as what we have here. The only difference is down here we're calling them x sub 0 and y sub 0. And up here we're calling them c1 and c2. But that means that my initial conditions completely determine the shape of my solution. And there's really no straight line per se. In other words, wherever you're at on your solution, or wherever you're at on the phase plane, you're going to be decaying exponentially in the x direction and decaying exponentially in the y direction. So it's almost like every point on the um, phase plane is on a straight line solution. So on the phase plane. This seems to be saying every point. is on a straight line solution. So we got to make some sense of what's going on. And of course, all those straight line solutions point towards the origin, because we're talking about exponential decay. So we're going to hop on Maple real quick and take a look at what this looks like.